Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside the Burrow, the FAU podcast for and by fans. My name is Dan. I am joined as usual by Shane and Jack. And tonight we are going to break down FAU's, uh, one of FAU's best uh, victories against Western Kentucky. Uh, FAU went into Bowling Green, came out with a victory 35 to 24. And there really is so many things, so many, you know, kind of key plays, big moments, momentum shifts, big stops, you know, so many different things that happened. Uh, so tonight we're going to do something a little bit differently. Really nothing. I don't think we've ever done this before. Uh, we're kind of go, we're going to kind of break the game down quarter by quarter um, since there, there were um, just so many momentous plays uh, that got us going. But I guess, I guess to, you know, to kind of start off um, just, just such a, a, a gutsy win um, for the guys. And, and Shane and I were talking about this earlier that, it, this was one of the, the best FAU wins that you you're, you feel good about. Um, certainly, we you know won a, a, a lot of games the past two and a half years, <clears throat> but this was one that was like this. This was a total team win, and we'll kind of get into that. So, um, I guess to uh, well, I gave my my initial thoughts, and, and we'll dig into the game. But uh, Shane, what was your um, your kind of first uh, initial thoughts um, about the game? It, it was a game, and we've pointed out this stat before, how recently, you know, under Lane, heading into this game, uh, 19 of his 21 victories at FAU were by more than double digits. And we ended up winning this game by 11 points, double digits, to add to that. But, you know, it didn't feel like a double-digit win. We put it away. Uh, the biggest thing with this thing is you went on the road, you fell down early, and you came back, and – it wasn't one guy who just carried the team. What was so great about this game is there's so many players who did so many little things to win this game. Everyone just chipped in. There wasn't one player who just carried us. Uh, this wasn't like in the days where we fell down, but Motor just got 200 yards and four touchdowns, and, a, you know, there's a couple other big plays mixed in. Uh, you know, Willie Wright had, you know, a back-to-back weeks now. You know, you could start to see it. So worth it, him getting the penalty on his little, his uh, known celebration, which is ridiculous. Uh, you know, um, Tronti was our third relady, uh, leading receiver in the game. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that more in the quarterback switching, but it's kind of worked for FAU. You know, it's when we need Tronti, we use him. Um, you know, uh, James Charles and Chauncey Mason each you know, uh, combined for just over – just under 130 yards rushing, and they both, I think, combined average like six yards a carry. I mean, they just did what they needed to do, um, kind of in the big moments. You know, how big was D'Angelo's Antoine on the last drive before Tronchi scored on that third down in that jet sweep where he got hit and just fought for the extra yards to keep the drive going? So it was it was just so many little things, and, the, you know, the defense stepped up um, and caused turnovers doing what they do. Uh, you know, to kind of just gut out a victory. Yeah, there were many words to describe this win. Gritty, courageous, gutsy. Uh, There are many players that we owe this win to. Antoine, Tronti, Robinson, James Pierre. list goes on and on. Uh, I don't know what it is about games in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and this Florida Atlantic program, but something about that place just pulls out the dramatic of victories for us. Uh, yeah, is, Jack, I don't want to tribute, but another fake punt. Another uh, fake we punt. We talked about on the on the. Uh, from, we just talked about you brought up that last time we brought the fake punt up in Western Kentucky. Last time we were up there. And and even though that drive didn't really end in anything, that that Matt Hayball, you know, just being able to gain those eight yards when you only needed one from our own twenty-one yard line. We flipped you. the field. We flipped yeah. the field. Right. And, and, and it's little things like that that, that help gain momentum. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but, I mean, first quarter, it was awful. And I'm really excited that we're going to be talking about it quarter by quarter because this game was a roller coaster within every 15 minutes. But it was awful. Lane Kiffin said he was, he was feeling awful after the 14-0 Western Kentucky lead. We couldn't do squat on offense. We had, what, three straight three and outs? But then – just like in Western Kentucky in 2017, we had an interception. This time it was a sack and a fumble for a touchdown. And that just 
completely flipped the script. Uh, definitely one of the most dramatic and best wins under the Lane Kiffin era, maybe of the entire FAU program history. All I know is that I'm ecstatic that we were able to get it done when it looked like we're about to fall on our face. I, I won't go that far because it wasn't an upset thing. We're more talented in West Kentucky. But, you know, let's just kind of talk about the first quarter. And I think there's a little bit more of a trend. Uh, Ken Levicka, and, and this isn't just speaking to the first quarter, but um, pointed out that FAU, and now it's two, but before going into this game, had only allowed one second-half touchdown in Conference USA play on defense, and that was the Marshall game, and now it was West Kentucky. So it's only two. Um, our defense seems to get better as the game goes on. And also – you know, especially Lucky Jackson's a stud. And I think, you know, there's just some elements of us knowing and we got to kind of accept as fans and kind of the type of coverage we play and we talk about. So let's just talk about the first touchdown. James Pierre just got beat. In right. How off, I mean, that's truly the first time where I looked at, I had to look three times to see was James Pierre getting beat. He's got beat. Lucky Jackson, a good receiver. Cornerback is um, – it's, it's like being a hitter in baseball and football these days. You know, I was actually talking to a power five uh, defensive back coach at a high school game. I saw a couple of weeks ago and he's like, he's like, yeah, I mean, he's the one told me it's like, it's, it's baseball. You are going to fail a lot of times. It's just because the way offense is these days and you can't touch anyone. It's such a tough position. James fear just got beat. Um, you know, kind of no big deal. Uh, but you know, the, the defense has just started slow. This year, I mean, look at Ohio State, UCF, the first two drives, and then they settled in for a little bit. So, and, and when you play man coverage, like we've said a million times, you're going to give up these plays. It just happens. I mean, it, it, none of the touchdowns seem to be open. A lot of times our guys were just in coverage, and the guy just made the great play. I mean, there's two where Zion was right on him, and Lucky just caught the ball. He just, just can't really make adjustments to that. You just got to – Hope over the course of a game, some will those 50 50 passes, a few more will fall your way, and they did. You know, I was thinking when, when I was watching the game that, Shane, when you were talking about if we just start throwing the ball uh, and make it an air raid offense if the running game isn't working, uh, we kind of did that in the first quarter, don't you guys think? We kind of abandoned the run early. There was a drive, I want to say the second or third drive, where we threw it on every single down to Harrison Bryant uh, with mixed results. Uh, maybe we're just trying to, you know, feel out the game still, but that's when it became worrisome. You had three straight three and outs. We had 40 yards to Western Kentucky's 151. Um, so it, I, maybe we just needed to fill the game out more because at the end of the day, it did work. But – in that first quarter, it was definitely worrisome. I'm not sure about y'all. All right, so I guess, uh, you know, if, uh, Western Kentucky came out in the – really in, in the first quarter and was up uh, 14 to nothing. And, like, um, <clears throat> I guess, you know, there's not much we really need to talk about in the first quarter because it was all – it was all Western Kentucky. FAU really couldn't do anything uh, on offense, and Western Kentucky was driving relatively – uh, easily. I mean, they, we did get beat by uh, the Lucky Jackson uh, big play. Um, but, uh, you know, really starting, uh, not really starting the second quarter, uh, about four, uh, with eight minutes left in, in, in the, the second quarter is when really, when, when momentum uh, really started to um, uh, to switch. So defense, you know, as, as kind of has happened, they just seem to find a way to make a play when needed. And uh, so that play was Achilles Leroy sacking, um, uh, sacking Western Kentucky's quarterback. The ball bounces kind of just away from him enough. Uh, Chris Tooley comes and picks it up for, for a touchdown. And that's, you know, one of those plays where, and I mentioned this against Marshall where, uh, Mar you know, Marshall had four fumbles, three on one drive, and they all just seem to bounce back to Marshall. And this was a time where the ball bounces the other way. FA was able to hop on it and, you know, um, and get the touchdown off of it. So really starts to change. And, you know, you read the, the, the – or listen to the press conferences and stuff like that. Everybody says that, you know, that play um, really changed everything. Uh, Chris Tooley had that. Larry McCammon uh, a couple minutes later really, you know, had an 11-yard run. And th that was – well, we can talk about his, his injury as well. 
Um, but uh, so at FAU quarter by quarter, um, or basically in the in the second quarter, uh, really dominated um, and uh, had 21 unanswered in the second quarter uh, alone. We really figured out Western Kentucky's defense. I'm I'm not sure if there was something else, um, you know, what stuck out to you guys in the second quarter um, after that. Yeah. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I want to say after the, the Chris Tooley fumble return for a touchdown, uh, we were able to, to stop uh, the Western Kentucky kickoff, like on the, what, the 10-yard line. We pinned them deep. Uh, and you Rashad's, saw a different attitude on yeah, that. Yeah, but then that, like. Yeah, they had swagger back, which was great. Rashad Smith, three-yard loss. Uh, they had, like, a, what, like a four-yard gain on a quick completion. And then I think it was – uh, I forgot who it was, guys, so so forgive me. But defensive back with a great SWAT um, right before they could convert a uh, first down first down pass. And, and you know, it, 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 that, that fumble recovery for a touchdown, it flipped the switch with the motivation, the swagger, everything else. Uh, and it, it was just great to see. Uh, great to see that Larry uh, run of 11 yards. How about that trick play in, the, in this second quarter as well, setting up? That 11-yard run, uh, game-tying 11-yard run by McCammon. Uh, the, the, Tronti coming in, starting a reverse, then taking off and catching. Uh, crazy thing is, he actually seemed like he was a bit banged up after he got tackled along the sidelines. He, but he obviously the locker room after that reception. Yeah. So, so. But it, it, he still came back out later in the game to help put the, put the game on ice. Uh, but, I mean, we were talking about it last week. When was the last time we saw a true trick play from this offense that actually worked? And this was it. It was scheduled at the right time, exactly when we needed it. And uh, I think that's what also got the offense rolling as well. Yeah, I just to kind of go back to the uh, – it's like so much what we talked about with Cooley, who was the last person to score a defensive touchdown prep for you on a – scoop and score but um you know yeah they kind of found that group and at that point you just saw how much faster they were uh i think it was just so important they stopped gage walker from the beginning lane said it in his press conference he didn't really even he's like almost said he didn't really care about the few big plays uh he's like we made him one-dimensional and you force a quarterback to throw the ball 40 times he's gonna make mistakes and, you know, the three interceptions is the result, uh, you know, those mistakes. Um, again, we talked about in, you know, in the second, um, in, you know, in the second quarter, they put Larry in and, man, he just looked different for a little bit, didn't he? I mean, he, I think he kind of started the run game going yeah. uh, until the defense wore down on his touchdown run uh, because Chauncey and James just weren't getting anything done. You know, I thought – especially going back to the first quarter, I thought Chris was feeling pressure that wasn't there for a second. Um, good job by also him. But I also want to say, D'Angelo Malone didn't have a sack. He hurried the quarterback a couple of times, but he did not have a sack for all the issues the O-line has had. Um, yeah, and I think that, that um, but it, it was – you know, Chris. Chris was like you said, feeling some pressure that maybe wasn't there, and he may have been, um, you know, maybe starting to not necessarily, you know, pressure in his face, but pressure for, you know, getting things turned around a little bit. Uh, there were some, there were some drops. Uh, Harrison Bryant had a drop, and obviously the Pico Harrison later in the game. Um, but uh, I think that that maybe played a, a little bit into it, where where drives could have been extended, um, and they weren't. So. Uh, and, and, you know, you go, go back to the, that trick play. Um, that really was, this was, this was a game where like everybody had a, you know, had a, a, a impact, a little impact. And, you know, the large game where Chris only threw for 209 yards, 207 yards. Um, but again, didn't turn the ball over, um, you know, didn't made the, made the right play when needed, didn't cost us yardage. I mean, that that's uh, uh, another big thing. And they just kind of – they pressed all the right buttons at the right time. Um, that trick play really was the – you know, we, we ran that that same trick play where the wide receiver throws to the quarterback um, several times. Um, it's, you know, our kind of go-to trick play. But we hadn't run it all, at all this year that I can remember. Um, and it was, it was, it was like the – it was the perfect um, – the perfect call. So, 
Um, FAU goes into the locker room 21-14, uh, comes out in the third quarter um, and goes uh, up to uh, everybody's uh, favorite wide receiver who might be making a resurgence. Willie Wright was much like his, uh, his wide open touchdown back when he was a freshman at Western Kentucky. Just, well, I don't know whether it was a broken coverage or uh, what it may be, but again, Willie Wright was left wide open for a 51 uh, yard touchdown pass. So that was, that was another thing that was pretty awesome to see. Yeah, well, it, it was a fake – FAU ran, like, kind of a, a fake bubble screen, and their safety totally bit on it. Yeah. And Willie just snuck behind them. I mean, they uh, – it was, it was a beautifully designed play. I know uh, it was kind of hard to tell with uh, the ESPN, you know, <laughs> guy in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I had to rewatch it a few times today to see what happened on that play. And that, that was on the first drive of the second half as well, guys. Remember, we started the second half with the ball. Shoot, we almost scored to end the first half. Remember, we got the ball back, and James Charles had a nice, what, 20-yard yeah. run field. Could you imagine if we scored on that drive just before halftime and then got the ball back? I mean, that's, the, that's it. It's over. But well, great to see Willie uh, score again two straight weeks. Uh, three plays, 69-yard drive. It took less than a minute off the clock, and that – that ended up being something that was a bit concerning, you know, as we entered the end of the third quarter and got into the fourth quarter is how quickly our, our drives were going. Because um, after that, we, we really seemed to struggle in the third quarter. Well, we, that following drive after Willie Wright got the yeah. touchdown, James Pierre got, the, got his first interception. He came, we came right back. And yeah. we, I think we were at like their 36-yard line. And I was a little surprised. I think we kind of came out and ran the ball. We went in our normal offense. And me, I was almost feeling like that's, that was like step on the throat time. Yeah. You know, 35-14. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we didn't. We didn't turn that drive into really nope. anything. Yeah, we got stopped. Uh, Chauncey Mason um, caught a pass yeah. out of the backfield and got stopped on – he got five yards, needed six. And, yeah, I mean, that's, that's another thing where – um, uh, we got called for offensive pass interference or offensive holding, I, I think it was. And um, so that, that kind of brought us back. And, yeah, there was a holding call when Antoine got a first down and that put us, uh, put us behind the chains and then we never really caught up. But, yeah, that, that drive there almost could have ended it. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we went for it on fourth down on, and uh, didn't get it. So Western Kentucky took over at their 35 or something like that. So. And, and, and how about this, though, guys? Uh, that drive was a five-play drive, and it was our longest of the quarter, uh, both in the amount of plays that it was uh, that was on, on the drive and the time. It took two minutes and seven seconds off the clock. Uh, after that, it was, all, <laughs> it was all Western Kentucky. The very next drive was uh, seven plays, 41 yards for about three minutes, uh, and that's when they also turned it over on downs. Remember when, when they yep. were in our red zone or pretty close to the red zone? Uh, we followed 30, that. Yep, yep. We followed that up with uh, with a th quick three and out, uh, three plays, thirty five seconds, and then this is when Western Kentucky started to feel themselves. Um, just before the end of the third quarter, they go on an eight play, eighty two yard drive spanning four minutes, over four minutes. Um, and you know, this is when we're saying, man, if if we had if we scored after James Pierre's interception or if we scored again going into halftime, then we wouldn't be as nervous as we are going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. When, when did, when, did, what was, how much time was uh, left when exactly when Western Kentucky scored to make it uh, a seven point game? There was three minutes, three minutes, and, 46 three minutes seconds. and 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's kind of like we were in the midst of their struggle. We gave the ball back to them again, and they went down, and we held them to a field goal. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's when things started getting kind of dicey. Yeah. And, and between that, the, the transition from the third quarter to the fourth quarter was a nice drive by FAU, 10 plays, only 48 yards. It was a gritty drive, but it took four and a half minutes off the clock. Um, I think that, that was Larry McCammon's last touches. 
pretty sure. Yeah, that drive, that was the drive where Marquise Robinson and McCammon got banged up again. That's right. I don't know how serious, you know, they were. Uh, I thought McCammon was serious when he went down. He was kind of writhing in pain. And, uh, but I did see him standing on the sideline, at least I thought on the telecast, like in the background somewhere. And I'm like, oh, wow, he's not back in the locker room. So, yeah, he was. You're right. Who knows? He's kind of toughed it out all year. Um, but yeah, I think that one kind of flipped the field. That was the fake, you know, we talked about that was the fake punt drive, you know, that flipped the field. Uh, you know, and and then, and then I think what well, we had another exchange of drives there, and that's when we went on the uh, the field goal drive. Correct. Yeah, they and, Western Kentucky had 11 play, 85 yard drive spanning over four minutes, um, in which they got the field goal attempt, and that led to another long drive by FAU when we attempted the field goal. I I don't remember seeing how that got blocked guys. Do you guys remember? Yes. Uh, so let's talk about the play. Let's talk about the play before that. And yeah, Pico so had I this tough drop, oh, um, which he, uh, he really, he's been kind of sure handed all year. I mean, you know, uh, not to go back to conference USA refs, but Holy cow. How did they not call his first touchdown, oh my touchdown God. without reviewing it? He was, he was running in the end zone with the ball. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they got it right. So legally, yeah. good step in the right direction. But did he need to put that in his luggage and take it home for it to be a catch? Um, yeah. Harrison Bryan kind of had one late, uh, like that too. They actually correctly called. It was a catch um, where he went out of bounds. On the side he dropped it. It was tough. That would have been the end of the game. Um, the block field goal really wasn't anyone's fault. I, I mean, who knows? I don't. Long snap perhaps times they have to get it back there, but. The guy came around the end and I mean, yeah. made the dive athletic play of a lifetime. I mean, he, it, you, you hardly see people come around the edge in block kicks anymore. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy, you know, and then, and then the long return and that just felt like, here we go. Yeah. Like wild all over again. Like, here we are about to take, you know, we're, we're about to essentially end the game and uh, something that, like the worst possible thing uh, can happen. It looked like he, I mean, he came completely unblocked around the edge and he came fast. Like there, there was no, it, you know, it's not like it was tipped. It was like pretty easily blocked. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know how much it, that is a question maybe for Revis and I'm an expert on kickers sometimes on the shorter kicks. They don't, they take a little less, maybe like a half a step less back from the, from the holder. Some kickers yeah. just, you know, they can kind of just get it up, get up quickly. They don't need as long as a run. Um, but yeah. And then just the return and it was just like, wow. <laughs> and then the very next play, you know, James Pierre gets the interception in. And, you, and I want to point out just defensive wise, and we were kind of, and we kind of going back to this with the, the the main difference of when FAU gives up the chunk plays in the secondary compared to when they don't is whether it just comes out where they get pressure or not. If you go back and look at every interception in the game, or any time Tyus Perry struggled, when we got pressure on him, they struggled. You know, they say it's for a defensive back, you have to cover a guy um, for three seconds and you're fine three full seconds. If the D line can't get to them in three, three and a half seconds, it's not good enough. You're in trouble as a DB. So whenever we got pressure on him, he threw picks and he kind of threw a, as I saw someone tweeted out a YOLO pass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Pierre got it right back. Um, and which I think led to honestly, one of the more beautiful drives in a yeah. while for FAU. Uh, this was, you know, the four-minute package. We need to end the game. I'm sitting there looking at the clock going, we need to score, we need to score. And I'm like, wait a second, a couple first downs, you can run the clock out. Uh, that's the best deal line's been all year. Mm -hmm. That was the best run blocking. That was just the most grittiest. They have a great run defense. Uh we know you're trying to run the clock out, but we're just going to run it down your throat anyways. And Mason and James Charles each got just chipped away and got nice runs on that. 
I said, we were talking about before the show, I mean, D'Angelo Antoine on the Jets, on the jet sweep play where he got hit and had to spin and break a tackle and fight to get a third down. I mean, that was huge. It was game saving. Yeah. Um, you know, they put in Tronti and it, I wasn't crazy about rotating the quarterbacks, but it just seems to work. You know, we're going to yeah. use Tronti in certain packages and situations. Lane says we have a four minute run out the clock package. It's a four minute package. Every, High school to NFL team has a four minute set of plays. It's a right. I mean, they like to, call. and FAU did it with flying colors. Um, and I'll never know what the Toronto run looks like. I can only envision it. I like to think he hurdled 11 people into the end zone. Thank you. Yes, right. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, but for, for those that don't know what Shane, Shane's talking about, the always uh, unreliable ESPN plus feed went out for their, what, the last – for basically that drive. Or, yeah, or half of that drive. The last half of the drive. And then, boom, comes back, FAU is up 35-24. Uh, cool. And, you know, I think everybody who wasn't listening um, to Ken, which, by the way, and, and we'll, we have retweeted some of Ken's calls. I mean, they're fantastic if you haven't um, listened to them. But every, everybody who was not listening to, to Ken comes back and be like, all right, game over, essentially. And uh, it would have been great to, um, great to see that. It, I mean, that drive, I mean, when Shane was talking about it almost play-by-play, play, I'm, like, getting pumped listening to it. <laughs> it, it. It just one of those moments, one of those drives where you, you said it, Shane, Western Kentucky's run defense is phenomenal. They know we're going to run the ball, especially when Tronti comes in. Uh, they know it's going to kill clock, and we just run it down their throat. Such a gutsy, gritty five, where, where it, it ends. Like and our fourth and fifth running backs. Yeah, and it's just like, like come after us. And then you just see time after time we gain yards, and you start flexing in front of the TV. Like, I'm not a big dude, but I'm just like, like let's, yeah. let's go. That's, that's an attitude. We, we, you know, we yes. said this on the podcast. You know, we're not Wisconsin. We're not a team to just line up and run it. And it was just nice to kind of see us just do it with a different cast of characters. Everyone kind of pitched in yeah. on that drive. And there was even a couple of times, I think, I think Jane Charles and Chauncey Mason each had a run on that drive that where they were like a shoestring tackle away from breaking it. You know, when teams put, start to load the box, sometimes that's when big runs tend to happen because everyone's down in the box. And if you right. get the first layer of defense, there ain't many, there ain't really anyone back there in the secondary to save a long run. Um, and then, you know, they, either they grind it out and put that game away because it would have been so FAU to give the ball down back to West Kentucky up four with like a minute 45 to go and me getting stomach ulcers. And you know what it reminded me though? It reminded me of the goal line stand we had against Wisconsin in Lane's first year in 2017. Shane, you were there in Madison for it, where it... Correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say it's still the first half. We're still in the game. Uh, it's, yeah. what, second second and goal, and we just know that they're going to run it down our throats from a yard out. We stop them on second down. We stop them on third. They're going to go for it on fourth down. The Big Ten Network commentator is saying, you're Wisconsin. This is a mid-major team. Run it down our throat. And then we just – If you see the size of Wisconsin's offensive line, the yeah. laws of physics, laws of physics. And, and we just stand tall and get the job done. You know, when it just, just complete shock that we're able to do it. And, you know, we know that what they're going to do and they know what we're going to do. And we just still find a way to stop. We, we take every single, all 11 players need to give 110%, just like on this drive against Western Kentucky to get it done. Uh, characters that you weren't expecting to show up at the beginning of the year and they showed up. And it just makes you so freaking proud that we got it done. It's nuts. Love it. And, and again, that, that Anton, when he broke that tackle, he, he spun away from three players. It was what, third and five, third and six, and he got it done. And then finally, the interception. Once again, Zion Gilbert. Uh, I mean, shoot, but uh, Kiki should have had an interception to start the drive. It was right in his yes. hand. Zion had one earlier where the ref got, no, I, it was on a different drive. I think it was their yep. first drive in the first quarter. West Kentucky was backed up, and Zion had a chance to pick one off. 
And I think like the ref kind of got in the way. Yeah, it was the umpire yeah. just completely yeah. got in the way. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> too many jokes to be made there. He made up for it in, in, in such a phenomenal way because I feel like he's been overdue for a, a clutch interception. Uh, so if you, if you guys noticed, Western's last two drives ended in an interception. We talk about how important the turnover ratio was going to be going to this game. Uh, and that, that did it. It made, it made it four turnovers to zero. That told the story of this game. It was on ice. It's over. We're going back to Boca to the warmth with a win. Huge one. Huge. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, just kind of the, the amazing part was, and you, were, you talk about the interceptions, um, you know, with the turnover margin again, our turnover margin, we are plus 11 on the season. The team that's number two in Conference USA is plus five. We, we are more than double. Um, yeah, it's maybe plus six, but we are close to double the next team in turnover margins. We were terrible on third down yesterday. I think uh, we were out for two. I mean, Lane pointed that out. We were, I think, two for 14, two for 12, something like that on third downs. Uh, that's awful. It's going to lose you a ton of football games. But four turnovers, you know, makes up a lot. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of just with the win and looking at the big picture, yes, bowl eligible. I thought it was interesting with Lane. Um you had that comment today where he said, yeah, I don't think our guys should really distract him, but eligibility, you know, we're thinking about championships here, you know, you got changing mindsets. Uh, I, I kind of, I like that. Um, and, you know, I said on the podcast, you know, last week, just win your games and things will fall your way. Marshall, they might've slept walk a little bit yesterday playing a bad team on the road, you know, teams tend to do this where they just kind of sleep walk through games. They kind of struggled with rice. So yeah, 20 to seven was the final score. Marshall's not an invincible team. God, it feels like someone's going to get them. It could very well be Louisiana tech. Even though that game is going to be in Huntington. You, you got to think the way how tech is playing right now. Uh, first off, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how our chances would be against Louisiana tech, especially if we have to go to Ruston in the championship game, but it'd be a fun game. I mean, it would come down to turnover. Both teams. There's, I think, believe they're the second best team in turnovers. I mean, they play a lot like we do. Yeah. It, it's either them or middle. I know, I know both of them are going to be up there. Um, but Marshall doesn't really impress me. And I, I really wish we could take a second, second try at him. I wish that was possible, but uh, I, I guess we're just going to have to become Louisiana Tech Bulldog fans for, for a weekend. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I mean, let's – so, um, you know, wrapping up the game, again, it, it, there, was, there wasn't there was one player that had, um, you know, a standout game, Chris throwing for 200 yards, two running backs that ran for 60 yards, you know, the, the backup slash QB one and a half, two thing. Uh, with Nick Tronti coming in and and getting some strong runs, Matt Hayball, you know the our, our punter. Obviously, we we talked a little bit about the fake punt, and uh, again, just the the perfectly dialed up call. But he had um, a 77 yard punt that put put uh, Western Kentucky back at the two. Um, you know, just we we there were so many little things that we did right as a team. Like this, you know, you talk about this being football being a team sport, and you know, a lot of times it's a team win. But this was a team win. Um, nobody – defense did what they had to do. They, they did what they do. Ben, don't break. Come up, the, come up with the big play when needed. And um, that, was, that was really nice. I mean, this, this basically um, – this win makes you – know, basically allowed FAU to continue to play in very meaningful games until next week, right? And, I mean, and, and we'll talk about FIU. We'll definitely talk about FIU um, <clears throat> with Super Bowl week later on, uh, later on this week, but this allows the team to be able to play in important and as a fan, fun games, um, you know, moving forward. So. Yeah. And can we put to rest the cold weather thing? Okay. <laughs> like the super cold weather thing. Okay. Twice we've gone up there. I mean, if we play a game at Wisconsin, like up way up North and a bowl game some December and it's like 15, they'll be like, all right. 
But I can tell you other teams, even Wisconsin guys, don't they don't want to play in that cold weather. We got better throughout the game. So just, just at me, Shane. Just at yeah. Me. I'm just <laughs> uh, you and Jake Oman who've done the cold weather thing. I'm like, come on, you know, 38, whatever. I I even heard on a Western Kentucky podcast. They're like, oh, it's gonna feel like 10 degrees to those guys. I'm, like, you know, it's brisk. You know, and like you said, when you're playing football, it's it, it, you know, running around and stuff and wearing pads, it's actually not that bad. But, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, we're FAU's playing meaningful games. Obviously, I think FAU fans uh, get involved on Twitter this week. Uh, have fun with it. FIU is – they're kind of down. I mean, we'll talk about them. I don't mind. They had a gut it just – down to the wire, uh, needed a last uh, stand defensive stop to beat Old Dominion this week. So they are kind of just wounded right now. But, you know, they would love to spoil their, our season. And uh, Butch Davis needs to beat us. If IU beat Old Dominion 24-17, um, we'll do a quick recap of Conference USA here. U2SA. Got blown out against Texas A&M. Nice. Um, as we talked about, Marshall beat Rice. Um, North Texas beat a lowly UTEP team, 52 to 26. Uh, so I guess the the one surprise of the weekend, Charlotte really really handling Middle Tennessee. Middle Middle is just kind of reeling at this point. Charlotte won 34 to 20 and actually moved to four and five. So Charlotte, amazingly enough, Charlotte could be looking at a um, could be looking at a bowl this year. And then. Um, yeah, UAB lost to, to Tennessee, thirty to seven. Jersey, yeah, which was a roundup there. So, I mean, good for Charlotte. Uh, this puts them in phenomenal position to go bowling for the first time in program history. Uh, that that's just awesome to see because I feel like we were all kind of high on them going into this year, especially after what they did to us to end last year. So, you know, if we had to pick one team in conference who would say East to go bowling right now. Would we pick Charlotte or FIU? I know Shane's going to say, well, FIU, so the, the Shula Bowl means more or something, but screw them, all right? It's whatever. It's, it's <laughs> eight week. They can lose to UMass for all I care. No, this week I'll be, I'm on with you, Jack. I mean, you know what I mean? I just – I know. You're right. You're at right. This point, at this yeah. point, I kind of want to watch that fire burn. Uh, <laughs> but you know, before, I said it would be fun if the game, like, meant something. But now it's like – right now they have – they're – game away from bowl eligibility, but their last three games are us, UM, and Marshall at Marshall. So, yeah. um, well, I think kind of with the importance of this, especially getting back to recruiting a little bit here, is if we win or it, let's just see if it does, the card doesn't far away and Marshall wins out, um, and we go to a nice bowl game, which just kind of speak to a bowl, little changes. Just to toss this in there, Bruce Feldman did tweet yesterday that it's looking like this is going to be one of the lowest outputs from the Power Five conferences for filling their bowl spots in a few years. Like a lot of Power Five conferences are not going to be able to fill their regular bowl spots this year. So it could give an FEU an opportunity to play in a bowl they might normally not have a chance at this year, um, the way it's looking. But, you know, with – FAU could really kind of set Butch and Butch and Lane are so compared at this point. If we go on and let's say finish the year, you know, uh, ten and three, nine and three, whatever, um, and Butch struggles down then, their roads have separated. You know, we're not looking at them equally anymore. You know what I mean? It, it becomes clear that Lane was the better hire at that point. I mean, I, I think you just look at their their head-to-head record and you can see who's the better coach on there. Lane Kiffin is just blowing them out of the water and dude, let's, let's make it three, three years on uh, of, of just curb stomping them in front of their puny little fan base. <laughs> well, we will definitely, um, uh, we will spend plenty of time um, uh, discussing uh, the FIU game, Shula Bowl week, but uh, for this week, um, I think we've, uh, we've, we've said all, all we can say, again, solid win, super proud of the guys, definitely something uh, as fans we can relish in this, in this win. Hopefully the team has forgotten about it and they're preparing for FIU because 
certainly uh, FIU coming to town would love to play spoiler um, in our conference with State East hopes. So, um, yeah, with that, once again, we, uh, as always, appreciate you guys being with us. Check us out, iTunes, um, FAUAllisNest.com, YouTube, uh, any place where you can find Inside the Borough, uh, and on Twitter, obviously, at Inside the Borough. Um, and uh, for Shane and Jack, we thank you guys for being with us, and we'll see you later this week when we talk about uh, FIU Shula Bowl game. Go out.